Okay, thank you so much for the invitation and uh, for this opportunity. I'm very happy to talk in the seminar. I'm presenting um, work in, in preparation with Lala Bosinger, Man Wai Cheung, and Timothy McGee. We're, we're hoping to upload this by the end of this month, hopefully. Uh, so most of the things are done, just, just need to polish the, the draft. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about cluster varieties. So I will start uh, talking a little bit about cluster varieties. Um, the, the, the way I like, or it's going to be good to think of cluster varieties in this talk, it's as a generalization of toric varieties. So in, in general, tor um, cluster varieties are, have an atlas of, of algebraic tori. Um, and this, this union of algebraic tori, uh, tori is going to replace the defining torus of a toric variety. And then we, we I mean, by work of many authors, um, many techniques in toric geometry can be imported into the cluster setting. So, so let me start with, uh, with cluster varieties. So in order to define uh, a pair, so here it's important to a pair of cluster varieties of a given dimension R, we need a quiver Q with R vertices. So the number of vertices is telling me the dimension of my spaces. And the only technical assumption we need to, to impose into, in, in this quiver, this directed graph, is that these two graphs are not subgraphs of my of my quiver, so we have no loops, no two oriented, uh, nor oriented two cycles, and we also have to to choose a subset F of the set of vertices. So whenever I put a zero here in in a set or an, in a simplicial complex, this will denote the set of vertices of such an object. And well, we need we need uh, to choose some some subset of vertices that we declare to be frozen vertices. And the idea is that to this data, we associate two cluster varieties, A and X, that they are dual in some sense. Um, it's it's, it's uh, like in toric geometry, so the toric setting, toric setting is obtained if we let Q to be a point. And in this case, A, Q, F, it's just going to be some torus and the other variety, it's going to be the dual torus. Um, so the raw, raw description of this of these uh, spaces is as follows. Uh, just at enteric geometry, we we start with a lattice n, whose rank coincides with the dimension of my spaces, uh, and m is going to be the dual lattice. Then associated to this. Um, Lattice, I have two, two tori, Tn and Tm. These are just the, the, the algebraic torus over uh, C defined by these lattices. And well, <clears throat> so in toric geometry, uh, the, the torus and the dual torus are just this tori associated to, to this pair of dual lattices. In, in cluster theory, uh, we're going to have that these spaces that we, uh, this, these cluster varieties uh, are going to be covered by tori of a certain kind. So the case of the A cluster variety is covered by, by tori of the form Tn, and the other cluster variety, it's glued out by tori of the form uh, Tn, so the dual tori. And the, um, I have as many tori as, vertices of a certain simplicial complex delta qf. So here delta qf is a very specific simplicial complex associated to q, a, q and f. This is in general called the cluster complex. And if you don't know anything about cluster varieties, putting the whole definition of these spaces and how, how do we uh, define this complex and how do we define this uh, this gluing of tori out of this uh, complex, it, it's going to be very technical. So I will just uh, present a running example through the talk and that generalizes to a family of examples. And that's going to be essentially uh, it. I'm not going through the really technical definitions of how to, uh, 
how to describe these this, uh, schemes more precisely. So, the, the, well, as I said, this series stands for the set of vertices of the simplicial complexes, a complex, a, of the simplicial complex. And well, this is a, a, a simplicial complex of dimension R minus one, if that helps in, uh, in any way. And we are thinking that every torus has a preferred set of coordinates called cluster coordinates. And the change of coordinates um, or the, the gluing maps that I use uh, to glue out this, this, this scheme out of this, uh, this one are very specific and they are called cluster transformations. So just to uh, give an example of how, how these spaces look, is as follows. I'm going to let my quiver QF to be this quiver. So I have uh, seven vertices. So my spaces are going to be seven dimensional. Uh, I decided to have five frozen vertices. So all these uh, five uh, blue vertices correspond to, to the set F. And in this case, the, the vertices of, of my simplicial complex are just triangulations of a, of a disk with five marked points, topological triangulations. And the edges, so, so I, will, I will have a, um, a probably, I, I say something wrong. The, di the dimension of this, uh, of this complex is the number of non-frozen vertices minus one. So in this case, it's going to be a one-dimensional simplex, um, simplicial complex. So the, the vertices are going to be the triangulations of this disk with five mark points, and the edges are just going to be triangulations that are related to each other by a flip. So I have my simplicial complex here. This is actually the, the simplicial complex QF in this, in this example. So I have five uh, topological triangulations of my disk. And then this, for example, this edge stands here because in this, this triangulation and this triangulation are, well, they share all the arcs except for, for one arc that was flipped in, in a quadrilateral. Okay. So, so this is my simplicial complex. And what are the preferred, so I have five torus in my, five, five tori in my atlas. So what are the, the, the set of preferred coordinates? Uh, okay, so the vertices are going to, I have five, five vertices. I will call them S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. Uh, the torus associated to a vertex SI has coordinates PIJ, where IJ is an arc of, of the triangulation. So, well, here, for example, uh, if I take S, S3, um, I will have five Fluker coordinates corresponding to P1, 2, P, P2, 3, P3, 4, P4, 5, and P1, 5, and the internal ones corresponding to P2, 5, and P2, 4. So, well, I, I already spoiled something. These are Fluker coordinates on a Grossmannian. Uh, so, anyway, so far you can think of, of, of these symbols just as some, some, some preferred coordinates for the torus, just uh, the names they carry. And and the important thing is how how this uh, tori are glued together. Uh, so if I have an edge between these uh, two vertices of my simplicial complex, uh, the change of coordinates or the gluing of, of this tori is going to be uh, given by um, by this. Uh, actually, uh, it's going to be a by rational map. Uh, and it's going to be given by this formula. So, so it's just like a Ptolemy relation. So since this Toro, Toro uh, share the same uh, arcs, like, like the triangulations share all the arcs except one, they share all the coordinates except one. So the, the only coordinate that, that it's not appearing uh, say for instance here, and it appears here, it's PJL, which corresponds to this arc that I'm putting here in red. And well, this, this coordinate goes to this, uh, to this expression, which is actually, if I, it, it's really like a Plucker relation. If I multiply PJL by PKL, what I obtain is a Plucker relation. And 
So essentially, in this case, the, 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 the gluing or the change of coordinates is going to be given by a fluke relation. And actually, in this case, the A variety associated to this to this uh, quiver, it's uh, to this pair QF, it's going to be up to co-dimension two, the affine cone of Degros minus, minus um, a certain uh, divisor. This divisor is just the zero locus of the of the product of the Plucker coordinates associated to the to the uh, external edges of my of my um, of my disk. So so it's uh, this optical dimension two means that if that this space and this space are isomorphic if I remove well chosen co-dimension uh, co two subsets of of domain and range from left and right, okay? Uh, and in this case, it also happens that both varieties are isomorphic. So, so essentially there's just uh, one variety here uh, with the difference being that the, the second variety has an atlas uh, given by dual Torre. Uh, but okay, so this is going to be my running example. My A variety is going to be a, some variety related to the affine cone of the Grassmannian. Uh, and uh, yeah, this example generalizes for Grassmann 2n. So instead, inside of Grassmann 2n, well, you just need to replace uh, this five bond for an n plus three clone. And uh, no, I'm sorry, in Grassmann 2n, uh, for, for Grassmann 2n, you just have to replace the uh, the pentagon for an n gone. And the simplicial complex is going to be the, the complex encoding the, the triangulations of this n gone. So it's going to be higher dimensional. The simplices are, the, 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 the edges are going to be uh, constructed in the same way. So if you want this, this example already accounts for a family of examples. And if you don't know cluster varieties, you can just stick to this family of examples. This, uh, my, my talk is going to be about this family of examples and, and maybe also I, 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 let me let me say that th this example admits a far-reaching generalization to any Grassmannian uh, variety, any Grassmann KN. Okay, so for those who know cluster theory, maybe you, this example is very familiar. So from now on, the notation I'm going to follow it's going to be D. It's going to be any one of these varieties, the A variety or the X variety, and V check or V, v dual. It's going to be the other one. So if V is an A variety, V check is going to be the X variety, and 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 the and, and, and vice versa. The dual of the uh, X variety is the A variety, and we will call this fog puncture of dual uh, or or mirror dual cluster varieties. So there's like a mirror symmetry picture sitting on the back, which I will not uh, talk about too explicitly, uh, just somehow in implicitly and. Since I'm allowing this V to be any sort of, of cluster variety, well, I, I will I will always be referring to this atlas they have, and I will denote by L the, the corresponding lattice. So, so if I'm in an A variety, L it's going to be uh, corresponding to the lattice N, and I mean the X variety case, the lattice L will correspond to the lattice N. So just to, to thread both cases simultaneously, I'm going to talk about general properties of these schemes. Uh, and I will <clears throat> make reference to the underlying lattices. So that's why I'm introducing this notation. So the key property for this top uh, of these schemes is that they are <clears throat> log Calabi-Jau. Uh, let me just uh, say that in, in a more concrete way, uh, how I'm going to use this log calabi hypothesis. Well, any such cluster variety has a canonical volume form omega uh, V such that if I restrict this uh, this volume form to any torus in the atlas, uh, well, it takes a very particular form. It looks like this volume form in this torus, uh, where C1 to C R are the preferred coordinates of the torus. So uh, another way to say it is that every torus in my atlas has a canonical volume form uh, given by this expression uh, in the preferred coordinates of the torus. And when I'm gluing these torus, uh, this this volume form extends to the gluing. That's that's another way to say it. Uh, and well, I'm going to um, to use this 
this volume form. Uh, ah, here's an S, I'm sorry. Uh, for every S in the set of vertices of my simplicial complex. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use this, um, this uh, volume form to define the tropicalization of these spaces, essentially, the integral tropicalization. So, <clears throat> so very like this is a conjecture by Fock and Goncharov in the, that's very old, maybe 2003. So in the beginnings of this theory, uh, actually Fock and Goncharov introduced these cluster varieties. And when they introduced these spaces, they also introduced this conjecture. Um, they, they claim that the regular functions on a variety has a canonical basis, so as a, C vector, as, as a vector space over the complex numbers, parametrized by this set, uh, which I will call the integral tropical points of the dual cluster variety. So what's this set of, 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 uh, of integral tropical points? Well, these are just discrete divisorial valuations on this variety. So these are uh, valuations uh, on, on the field of functions of the, of the dual cluster variety um, that are divisorial. So what does that mean? They're, they are the order of vanishing along a certain divisor D on a variety that is very rational to be, to be checked. So that's, that's what it means. And we ask that the, uh, so, so the volume form can be thought of as an element of this uh, of this field, right? Because this is just uh, um, the the corresponding element on the field of functions of my cluster variety or of my dual cluster variety. And I'm asking that this that that that, that corresponding function uh, has a pole of a certain order along such a device. So, so essentially, these points are just uh, discrete divisorial evaluation that have poles on where my canonical form, volume form has a pole. Uh, I will give an example of, of actually a, 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 a case in which this conjecture holds, actually the trivial example. Uh, so I, I will reframe this, this, this conjecture in the context of toric geometry so that you can relate to it if it looks very abstract. So first of all, let me just say that the, this conjecture is falling, false in general. That that's, uh, was proven by gross hacking and kill, maybe in, some, in 2012. And then in 2014, gross hacking, kill, and Konsevich introduced set of functions on cluster varieties. So these are particular kind of, of global functions on my variety, and gave conditions uh, for this set of functions to, to, to be a, a basis of this ring, uh, of, of this uh, space. So in other words, uh, maybe maybe I should here put a C. Um, the, as a vector space, this has a vector space decomposition uh, with a one-dimensional theta function associated to every tropical point. Uh, well, a, a one-dimensional space determined by every theta function, uh, and there's a, a theta function uh, for every tropical integral tropical point. So let me just put an example. This this would be my example of set of functions in my in my <clears throat> in my running example. But maybe before going to that, I, let me just give the the toric example. So when I'm in the in the toric case, I I'm in the case in which the vertex uh, the the quiver is just a sim single vertex. My variety is just a torus. The Dual variety, it's just going to be the dual torus. <clears throat> and um, well, in this case, we we have an identification of the tropical space uh, associated to the dual cluster variety to with lattice L dual. So essentially, if you um, apply this definition to, to the toric case, what you would turn is with a toric divisor here. So essentially, this is go, go, just going to be the set of toric divisors that it's that corresponds to the co-characters of the of the of the torus. And in this case, the canonical basis of the torus, of the regular functions of the torus parameterized by L, L dual or by this tropical space, it's simply the basis of characters. So somehow the idea of of of, of Fock and Goncharov is that, well, 
These cluster varieties are obtained by gluing algebraic tori. Uh, so somehow this uh, this base this character basis on each torus should should extend to a global basis in all my, in my all my cluster variety. Uh, and well, they they also claim that different uh, tropical spaces like this um, associated to different. I mean, they they also like give a lot of insight about how to think of this tropical space in the general case. Uh, so this is like the toric example. So in this conjecture in the toric, in, in, in the toric uh, case or in the trivial case, uh, it's just corres corresponds to saying that the torus has a basis of, of, of characters and that the characters are uh, parametrized by the dual lattice. Okay, so well, let's go back to the example. In the running example, we we can make these theta functions very explicit. So I, I, I know I'm not defining theta functions. That would be also over the top of this uh, talk. It's like kind of a, a very technical construction in which you have to consider scattering diagrams, um, broken lines therein, uh, or yeah. So it's 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 very uh, large uh, topic and deep topic. So so in this for those who know theta functions on cluster varieties, that's perfect. If you don't know, and you're just sticking to the running example, these are the set of theta functions in my cluster variety. So uh, it's just going to be the Plucker, the frozen Plucker coordinates. That, so the, the Plucker coordinates associated to the. Uh, so okay, so I, I will have a theta function for every uh, for every uh, vertex s in my in my. In my simplicial complex, and for every internal arc of of the triangulation S, I will have a monomial on the plukers of those internal edges raised to a positive power, and the, and I will have a monomial on the uh, plukers corresponding to the edges of the triangulation um, to the power of to to, to a integral power. So those are going to be the set of functions. In this case, uh, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you yet to which tropical points this set of function corresponds, but, but that there's such a, a tropical point for every such uh, a set of function. Okay, uh, maybe I, I can wait to, to see if there are uh, questions so far. So yeah, I know that you can put it in the chat. You can also feel free to uh, put your microphone on and, and ask this question. Okay, so if there are no questions, I will continue. So the first lemma I want to present is like it's 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 it, it's it's giving me access uh, a more concrete access to this set of tropical points. So so the lemma is it's not a it's not a difficult lemma, but you need like maybe to to think correctly of everything. Um, so every 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 torus in in the atlas of the cluster variety be check gives rise to a bijection. So this is a set theoretical bijection between the set of tropical points and the points of the Lua lattice. And this dual lattice is just an isom it's isomorphic to set to the R. So in other words, this tropical space, it's just an instance of set to the R. So, so, so maybe a, we can say that like, like, this toric, like, like, like in toric geometry, this, this corresponds to toric divisors. So in this cluster set, uh, setting, this, this tropical space also corresponds to some divisors. And it happens that these divisors are all also uh, in bijection with set to the R in a non-canonical way. So every, every seed or every point in my, in my cluster complex, every vertex in my cluster complex give me such a, gives rise to such an identification. So, so, so when I take a tropical point and then I, I take the, this lattice um, version of it that corresponds that, that, that it's obtained via this uh, uh, this bijection that corresponds to a to a point uh, to a vertex S of my simplicial complex, I will denote it by QS. Q goes to QS, so it's uh, it's, it's it's lattice version that determined by the the, the, the vertex S or the seed S. And I'm going to write uh, like this. 
uh, tropical point S, when, when I really think of this as lattice via such an identification. In particular, when I have such a, a, a lattice, well, this lattice lives inside a, a real vector space. And well, so I can think that this tropical space uh, for every for every seed, this tropical space is sitting inside some some real vector space, and well, it turns out that we have also a well-defined set of real tropical points. Yeah. So here I'm really trying to avoid any technicality about these tropical spaces. Maybe I I, I just want to think of them as instances of lattices or or real vector spaces, and well, I have such an instance for every seed for every vertex of my of my simplicial complex um, and and the point is that any two identifications are related by very precise piecewise linear isomorphisms so you can think you have a family of lattices <clears throat> or uh, or vector spaces and families of piecewise linear isomorphism in between them and the tropical point it's just uh the orbit of a point in 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 in, in these spaces through these piecewise linear isomorphisms so this is going to be my definition of, of the real tropical spaces, uh, of the real tropical points. There are other more geometric definitions uh, which make reference more to the generations of my varieties or to non-Archidemian geometry. Uh, I, I, I'm trying not to go into, in, into those uh, directions. I'm just trying to keep it as, as, close, as, to, uh, as close to lattices as possible. OK, <clears throat> so we're always going to assume that the Fokker-Gontrov uh, conjecture holds. <clears throat> as, as I mentioned before, this is not always the case, but already Gross, Hacking, Kiel, and Konsevich gave us uh, very almost optimal conditions for this conjecture to hold true. So, so let's say uh, this is not a biggest, uh, like the strongest assumption in this, in this world. Okay, <clears throat> so I, I, I want to start talking about polytopal objects on and so forth. So for this, I will need to talk about uh, structure constants. So these uh, these set of functions have uh, structure constants. So in this case, uh, with the fogon of conjecture holes, well, if I make the product of two global functions, I obtain a global function. And since the set of functions are a basis of, of, of the ring of global functions, this, this, this regular function should be described as a linear combination of the elements of the basis. So this gives rise to this multiplicative constant. So this is just the, the scalar corresponding to, uh, appearing in this product, okay? So, so just the structure constants of the set of bases. A club set, uh, okay, so now I'm thinking this as R to the N or many, like presented in many ways. Well, here I, I already picked a seat, so it's it's a, a fixed R, uh, R to the, R, so it has a topology. So I will take the standard topology of, 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 of R. So a club subset there, it's going to be positive if this condition holds. So let me just uh, untangle it a little bit. Uh, for any pair of positive, positive integers, and for every point in the A dilation of my set, integral point of my, uh, of, my of the A dilations of P, and for every integral point of the B dilations of P, uh, and for every R appearing in the in the product of uh, theta p times theta q, we got R to be in the a plus b dilation of p. So so this is uh, these sets are characterized by 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 having this grading property. So if I have a point in 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 the a dilation and I have a point on the q dilation of p, then I have corresponding set of functions. I multiply those set of functions, then that's a sum of set of functions, and I want all of those set of functions to be parameterized by points of the A plus B dilation. So if we're talking about characters, this would just be a, a any polytope will satisfy this, because uh, in 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 toric geometry, uh, essentially the the, the 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 product of two characters it's the character of the sum. So so that's. That's kind of uh, this definition. It's kind of uh, replacing what a what a polytope is in in this set of 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 uh, in this setting of cluster varieties and set of functions parameterized by tropical points. 
So the main point of this definition is that P determines a graded subring of, 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 of the ring of regular functions on, on, on V join X. So this is just going to be a grading variable and the elements of, of on, on the, uh, yeah, on the, on P are going to correspond to the degree one elements here. And in the second dilations are going to be the set of functions that, that lie in the, in the, in, in 2P, so on and so forth. So the point of this of this definition is that allows me to to construct uh, graded subrings of uh, oh, so this is an R associated to the polytope. I'm sorry. So this is this ring. It's a ring uh, associated to the polytope. It's a graded subring of this of this ring. The theorem is that uh, of GHKHK. Quickly ask yeah. the question: um, sure. Is this an own if and only if, or just one direction? The non-vanishing of the structure constants. So uh, you said if it's non-zero, then yeah, it's it's point. an it's an if and only if because it's for every R such that the structure constant. I mean, it's for all the structure non-zero structure constants. Yeah. But could it, could I have points such that in in the in the A plus B dilation, where ah. the structure constant constant still vanishes? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so theorem, uh, theorem by Groska King Kiel and, and, and also using recent work by Sean Kiel and Tony Yu, um, just to remove some assumptions, unnecessary assumptions that appear in GHKHK, is that if I have a top dimensional, compact, rationally defined positive polytope inside uh, this uh, real vector space, then we have uh, an inclusion of V in the projective variety defined by, by this graded ring. So, so, so these graded rings allow me to, to obtain projective compactifications of B. And I also obtain a toric degeneration of, of this pair into, uh, if you want, the toric variety associated to the, I'm sorry, the, the, the projective variety associated to the grade, graded ring degenerates to the toric variety associated to P. This is toric variety associated to P. And the cluster variety as a, uh, degenerates to the defining torus of the cluster variety. So if you want, the, the aim of this project is to the re reverse this construction. Namely, for whenever I have, I have a partial compactification of V, or, 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 or I have a compactification of V into a projective variety, then I would like to associate a polytope. So if you're in, in toric geometry, you, the, the, this, this aim, it's, it's saying, Giving a toric variety, a predicted toric variety, what's the associated polytope? So that's the question we're posing. That's the question we're trying to answer. And this is not always possible. We need like uh, we need this inclusion to, to to respect something. We need this y to somehow remember the cluster structure. So I'm going to, to I'm I'm going there in a second. And the second it's it's that this uh, polytope can be understood as a Newton Oconco body for a certain valuation and certain yeah in certain ring. So okay, first of all, which are going to be the uh, the, comp the partial compactifications that we are going to consider? Uh, well, these are the following. First of all, the, the, the guiding question is is the following: If I have a partial compactification, can we obtain a basis of 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 the global functions on y from the theta basis on 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 v? And GHKHK idea was okay, maybe just the simplest answer gives the gives the the, the I mean maybe we have a simple answer to this. Maybe only those set of functions that extend to y uh, are enough to 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 get obtain a basis for uh, for this ring. Uh, well, that idea is going to to prevail if we if 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 y is sensible to the cluster structure and this definition is meant to tell tell you which are the these partial compactifications that are sensible to the cluster structure. So a partial minimal model of V is an open inclusion of V into a normal variety Y, such that omega Y has a simple pole along every reducible component of the boundary. Uh, so this is a definition lemma because, I mean, this, these are partial minimal models uh, with respect to the minimal model program. So if you want, this is a worked out definition. Yeah. and and Minimal if y is projective. Projective. So we're going to consider basically a 
we're going to extend V by, by, by throwing up some device or something we need to be, such that this canonical volume form has a simple pole. So the example for those who know cluster algebras is that if we let the frozen variables vanish, uh, we have a, a partial minimal model. So in my example, if I have these Plucker coordinates well, that I call frozen, P i i plus one, and I let them to zero, I, I obtain something that looks a little bit more like the, the uh, optical dimension two. This is going to be like the affine cone of the Grassmannian, and that would be an partial minimal model of my variety in my running example. So, okay, so now I'm going to tell you how how to to describe this step at least heuristically, how to how to um, how to describe the, those set of functions that extend from B to Y. Okay, so we will just fix a partial minimal model. Let D1 to Dn be the irreducible components of the boundary. And we will define the set of superpotential at, as follow. So these divisors are divisors at infinity of V. So this, uh, these are divisors on a variety by rational to, 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 uh, to, to V, namely Y. So I can consider the order of vanishing of, along these divisors. So these divisors determine tropical points. So these divisors, order of D, are tropical points of my cluster variety set T, right? As such, I mean, I'm assuming the, 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 the Fokker charm conjecture holds. So every tropical point has a set of function. So I have n set of functions, it, a set of function of V check, uh, and, and I have a set of function for every device. So I have n set of functions and I can add them. So if I add them, I, I obtain a regular function on my dual cluster variety that I will call the set of superpotential. And we will say that this uh, uh, V has enough theta functions if, if this set, the set of, of theta functions of V parameterized by all, all, all points P, so these are order of vanishing of, along some divisor D prime. Uh, so if uh, this divisor, it's a divisor at infinity for, for or it's a divisor in a, in a, in a variety of rational to to be, dove, uh, to be dual, and I want the, the superpotential to be uh, to be pole free along those divisors. Yeah. So so if this set is a, is, is a basis for this ring, we said that uh, that this inclusion has enough set of functions. So intuitively, uh, this is this set is what I what I was telling you. This uh, this set is parameterizing those set of functions of V that extend to to Y. And okay, there are some technical conditions for this intuition to be true. I don't want to go really th uh, through all of them because I do to time. I don't know uh, how much time I do. I, I have. Uh, we started like ten minutes late, so maybe like twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. Something. Okay, okay, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, okay. So maybe I can go, come back to these conditions if you are uh, interested. So, so we have a set that that basically it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's this should just you think as a super potential cone. This should look like a cone in some tropical space, and the points of that cone should should parameterize the the functions on that extend from from b to to y. And this intuition is true, provided some some technical assumptions that I that I will not go through right now. Okay, these these are conditions that are given by JHKHK. They conjecture to be true in in nice situations, but these are open conjectures. Maybe the first condition it's it's uh, it's announced already by Greg Mueller, Manuel Cheung, uh, Greg Mueller, Travis Mandel, and Timothy McGee. But the second con uh, condition it's still open. So this, let me just go through the picture we're going for, because this, uh, this is really, a, it's, it's like the rough version of our main theorem. Um, but there are going to be lots of, um, of players that will show up, and, and then the rest of the talk is going to talk about this, this new uh, uh, players and, 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 and actually state the main theorem. Okay, so we're going to, for, the, for the, this picture, we want Y to be a normal projective variety, uh, we're going to consider y to, to has Picard, the Picard group of y to be free of, of finite rank. We're going to, call, to, 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 to refer to the universal torsor of y. This is the universal torsor. 
which is just a relative spectrum uh, uh, construction, relative spectrum over Y of, of, of this quasi coherent shift of OY modules. So every line bundle can be thought of an o, of a OY module. And then I, I, I took a relative spec of that, of, the, of, this, of, of this sum uh, with respect to Y. So maybe this is a little bit too abstract for some people. Maybe if Y is just a smooth, like, like the Grassmannian, uh, the Cox ring is going to be the ring of uh, of all the uh, of all the line bundles on Y, and if it's finitely generated, the universal uh, torso is just going to be a spec of this Cox ring. Okay, so if you like to stay here, it's fine. Uh, intuitively, this is space. Uh, knows about all the line bundles of Y, in other words, knows about all the embeddings of Y into projected spaces. Okay. So what we would like to do is that this universal torsor is a partial minimal model of an A cluster variety with enough theta functions, and that the action of, of, of since this, and this is going to be graded on, uh, by, by, by the Picard group, uh, the functions on this space is going to be by the Picard group, so there's going to be an action of the dual of the Picard group on the universal torso, and we want that action to be clustered in some way. Uh, I'm going to come to this in the, in the next slide. And in that case, we will have, then what we will have is that Y is a, it's a minimal model of a quotient of a cluster variety, uh, of the A cluster variety, and for every line bundle, we're going to have a positive set uh, living in the tropical points of that, uh, of that uh, quotient of the cluster variety, that's a good quotient of a, of a cluster variety uh, act by a, by a torus. And actually, uh, the, well, the ring of, the section ring of that line bundle, it's just the, ring, the, uh, the graded ring associated to, to this positive set. And moreover, we can understand that, that, that uh, positive set as a Newton of Onco body for a distinguished valuation on the on, on, on the ring of functions on this quotient variety. So this is the picture we're going for. I'm going to, 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 to give a precise statement. So, but, but okay, um, what do we are going, what are we going to need in order to, to define this, uh, to get our main term? We need to talk about these quotients of cluster varieties and about these uh, new to no bodies, okay? So in the next talks, I'm going to, Talk about uh, in the next next slides. I'm going to talk about this uh, this is these these constructions, these quotients and fiber con construction, and these uh, Newton of Kunkum bodies. So okay, quotients and fibers of cluster varieties. So if I have a monomial map between tori, right? This is just a statement in in basic uh, <coughs> linear algebra or yeah group theory. Then the pullback corresponds to actually to a group homomorphism from the lattice n to the lattice n. So that's a monomial map. So this homomorphism, this homomorphism has a kernel K. And well, this kernel gives rise to two, two dual maps. The inclusion of K to N and dualizing it, I get a map from, uh, from the dual of N to the dual of K of the kernel. Okay, this is the dual of the kernel. <clears throat> okay, so at the level of Torre, this corresponds to a, an inclusion of the Torre TK to the, and, 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 a, and a, a vibration or, or a map from the torus TM to the TK dual, okay? So this is just, I mean, out of a monomial map, I got these two maps. Essentially, by this inclusion, I can let the torus TK act on TN, and, and I can consider fibers of this, uh, of this dual map. So the, the claim is that if, if, if this P corresponds, like when I give bases to these to this spaces, uh, to these lattices, I'm sorry, well, P corresponds to a matrix, and if this matrix looks like the quiver somehow, then the, the, the monomial map extends to the map of cluster varieties. Right? So this, this is telling me, okay, uh, the corresponding tori carry uh, distinguished coordinates. Those coordinates are actually given by bases on, on, this, on these lattices. And in, in that basis, uh, my my uh, my matrix looks like you know like the incidence matrix of the quiver. I, I mean I, this is this is uh, what I'm telling you here. Then the map, this monomial map, extends to a globally defined map. Moreover, these maps also extend to the to the close whole cluster variety. So 
uh, somehow this map also glue the, like the, the, the gluing of, of, of um, in the atlas of these varieties can be done relatively to the, relative to these maps okay so this is what uh, what this kind of maps is what talking on chart call cluster ensemble maps for example so so for us they are going to give inclusions of tori and and vibration let's say actions of tori in, inside a cluster varieties and vibration of x cluster varieties over tori and it happens that if i act by this uh, if, if if i act by this uh, by if this torus act just by by multiplication then I have an associated wood quotient. And this wood quotient looks very much like a cluster variety in the following sense. It's going to be glued out by tori, parametrized by the same set, but this time the tori is going to be associated to the lattice Ed mod K. And the fiber over one of, of, this, this, uh, of this map, here I have the E, uh, it's going to be a, a, a cluster variety, a variety that called, called XE. It's also going to look very much like a, cluster variety, um, uh, but it's going to be glued by dual tori to this. So these two look like, 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 like at least at the level of tori, are, uh, are dual. So I will say that the dual of this space is this space, okay? So these are the, these are the, like, um, like part of the, of the, of the, of the points that, that appear here, for example, here and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Here's the check. So here is like the check, and here it's uh, well the a a the, the 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 quotient. So so that's why I'm talking about this. Maybe in the example, in the running example, uh, here my a variety inside my affine cone. Um, we can. I mean, the claim is that we can choose a cluster ensemble map such that the action of the corresponding torus uh, coincides with the action of T peak dual on the on the cone. So, so, so this in this example theorem <clears throat> tells, tells me like I mean, there's like a, such an uh, a P, P map because I mean a, the the maps satisfying this this condition are actually a family of maps. It's not a single map. Okay. Uh, and the quotient, it's just going to be uh, up to dimension two, the positroid variety inside the Grassmannian. So it's the Grassmannian minus this anti-canonical divisor, okay, up to dimension two. So in my example, I can also see this, uh, this, uh, uh, these objects very concretely. Okay, now let's go to, I, I will try to, yeah, to cluster valuations. Let me just uh, uh, say, okay, this quiver is a full round if the matrix, uh, the incident matrix of the, this is a rectangular matrix, the incident matrix uh, of this quiver, it's a full round. Uh, uh, so there's a theorem that it's in between the lines of GHKHK, but actually was stated in by Fujita Oya, is that if QF is a full round, then every seed, uh, for every seed there's an order on the lattice M and evaluation on the field of on on the ring of regular functions of the cluster variety to this is to to this lattice with this total order and moreover this lattice i'm thinking that is identified with the tropical space via this seed s so the g vector of a set of function is just the lattice version of that tropical point that's uh that's that's the theorem and the corollary uh this this corollary can be obtained by just applying the theory of GHKHK that we have an analysis result by for any X cluster variety and for uh, these quotients. Um, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to explain you how this total order is it's obtained, but at, at least we know the values of this valuation in the, in the, in the set of bases. So the assignment of a set of function, in, in other words, the assignment of a set of function, so if we assign to a, a set of function, the, the corresponding tr tropical space, uh, that gives me an assignment that can be made, uh, can be thought of as evaluation. That's, that's the content of the theorem. And the remark is like, okay, in this paper we're writing, we can, we can actually are able to obtain G vector valuations beyond the full run case, uh, provided we have a, some, some sort of toric degeneration. So I don't want to make uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, much fuss about this remark, but I mean, like, there's, there's like a, a small improvement uh, to the, well, to this term that is kind of the state of the art so far. I have an example of how to compute this valuation for the seed. It, it's just using these three valiant trees. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I think I, I don't have time to talk about this. I, I, I maybe in the, in the questions. Maybe just let's get to the main term of the talk. So I'm, I'm going to go back to the picture I have. I have a Y to a normal projected variety, such that pick Y is of finite rank, and the Cox ring of Y is finitely generated. Okay. So a, value, a, a neutron concord body, I, I, this definition is the definition of, 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 of neutron concord bodies of line bundles on, uh, on Y. So if I have a valuation on the, uh, on, 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 on the, on, on the coordinate ring of this is actually Cox ring. On the Cox ring, uh, the no body associated to a to a to a line bundle, it's just going to be uh, the convex hull of the closure of this set. So this set uh, takes the valuation of all the points, all all the sections f. Uh, this section lives in the k tensor power of l with itself, and then I divide by k. So this this is just uh, a subset of Z to the R. Okay. This is the neutron no body. And the theorem, um, the main theorem of, of, of the talk, is frozen. It's the following. Uh, so we, hmm, the picture is not moving. Okay. It's frozen, right? You cannot see the main theorem there. Ah, okay. There you go. Okay. So the main theorem is like we assume the universal torsor of 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 y has an a cluster has an a cluster structure or or moreover it's a partial minimal model with an offset of functions on an a cluster variety. We let a, we consider the you know the uh, the cone parametrizing uh, the the functions on 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 the universal torsor. This is given by uh, by these points. Uh, the, 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 the tropical points the, for which the evaluations for which uh, the, the superpotential it's regular. And well, I will denote this, this set as W trop UTY bigger or equal to zero. I, I will suppose that there exists a, 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 a P map from end to end such that the action on TKI coincides with the action of, of the dual of the Picard group on the universal torsor. Here, in particular, this implies that, in particular, uh, the TK base it's identified with T peak. Yeah. So the, this TK was the base of the map TK from the X cluster variety. Uh, so okay. So 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 now points of this. Uh, points in the codomain of this map are going to correspond to line bundle tens or something. So if I take, uh, so, so in particular, here I have uh, the class of line bundle. For every line bundle, I have the class of, of the line bundle tensor with one, okay? Um, so I assume A has a G-vector valuation. That means that A is of full rank, or it's within our theorem that it has a toric a GHK de 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 degeneration, toric degeneration. Then for every line bundle, uh, the Newton Oconco body associated to uh, to this to this line bundle and this valuation can be described in terms of this map and the superpotential cone. So essentially I have to slice the superpotential cone by the inverse image under this map of the class of the line bundle. So in, so in other terms, I mean, so if you're already lost, this what this theorem is telling me, it's that uh, for every line bundle, I can I have a, a cluster Newton or Concord body given by G vectors, and that can be described by slicing a superpotential cone by a hyperplane determined by this weight map. That's what it's telling me. So in particular, we can show that this is a positive set and this is a positive set. This is going to be a positive set. So we go back to the starting point. We wanted to uh, to associate positive sets to 
minimal models of, of, of cluster varieties. So what's the what's actually the outcome? Well, the outcome is that this why it's going to be a minimal model of this uh, quotient of the cluster variety. We have a positive set associated to every embedding of 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 of, of y to some projective space, and well. <clears throat> The associated Newton uh, or Conco body with respect to this valuation can be described in this terms, just like this is slicing of a cone uh, by by some space. And in particular, we know how different Newton or Conco bodies associated to different valuations are are related. They are related by very precise piecewise linear uh, transformations that are iterated tropical X cluster transformation. That's like the content of the theorem. And finally, the final remarks is that this theorem applies, for example, to Grassmannians and flat varieties and, and maybe more. We, we need to analyze the question of when a universal torsion of a variety has a cluster structure. Uh, we also know that Rich Williams no bodies for Grassmannians are instances of this construction uh, through, through this uh, map P. I, I mean, this is also explained in the paper. And we have other versions of these constructions for vial divisors without making reference to, to universal torsion. So this was just part of the like one version of the theorem, we have another version that makes zero reference to universal torsors. Thank you very much for your attention. That's that's it for today.